people people change black 
at Speakeasy after a day of catfishing to show off his skills dancing shag. He could dance real well, she says. But I was scared to death. Sport was heckling the black protesters on Main Street as they solemnly held placards in front of the segregated stores. Segregation, America's shame, the handwritten sign read, No color line in heaven. And Sport was lying in wait for a certain bus to pull into the Greyhound Depot on May 9, 1961. Freedom Riders, they were called, black and white students traveling through the South, testing the new desegregation laws at bus station restaurants and restrooms. Lewis described what happened in his autobiography, Walking with the White, a memoir of the movement. I approached the white waiting room in the Rock Hill Greyhound Terminal. I noticed a large number of young white guys hanging around the pinball machine in the lobby. Two of these guys were leaning by the door jam to the waiting room. They wore leather jackets, had those ducktail hair cuts and were each smoking a cigarette. Other side, nigger, one of the two said, stepping in my way as I began to walk through the door. He pointed to a door down the way with a sign that said colored. The next thing I knew, the fist smashed the right side of my head. Then another hit me square in the face. As I fell to the floor, I could feel feet kicking me hard in the side. I could taste blood in my mouth. Wilson winces as he reads the passage from an autographed copy of the book that Lewis gave him. I don't ever remember kicking him, he says. But I know he got my fist. For years, Wilson didn't know the identity of the man he had beaten, though he says that over time, guilt began weighing heavy on his heart. It was only recently, he says, that things became clear. Underscore 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 Willie McLeod. Robert McCullough. John Gaines. W.T. Dub Massey. Thomas Gaither. Clarence Graham. James Wells. David Williamson Jr. Matt Workman. These are the men whom Wilson taunted all those years ago. The men to whom he has been apologizing in recent months, asking their forgiveness and blessing. Their names are engraved on the stools at the counter of the Old Town Bistro on Main Street. The former McCrawberries is now a family-run restaurant that bustles with hospitality and charm. Waitresses greet regulars by name and pour endless cups of coffee for patrons, black and white. And yet it is impossible to walk in and not feel transported in time. Sepia-toned photographs hang on the walls, images of young black men at this very counter, where temporarily closed signs went up as soon as they sat down. Outside, the historic plank marks the spot where nine Friendship Junior College students took an extraordinary stand on January 31, 1961 choosing jail rather than bail after being arrested for ordering hamburgers and sodas. Convicted of trespassing and breach of peace, the students endured a month's hard labor in a chain gang rather than allow civil rights groups to pay $100 each for their release. The case of the Friendship Nine drew national headlines and soon the policy of jail. No bail was being emulated all over the South. Today, the eight surviving members are hailed as celebrities every time they walk in the door. Their art history says a young white waitress one recent afternoon as she serves coffee to Massey and McLeod. She tells them it's on the house. The men, now in their 60s, smile as they recall those heady days, how young and foolish they were, how filled with conviction and pride. They describe weeks of non-violent training with the Congress of Racial Equality, a Gandhi-inspired civil rights organization that taught them not to respond when men like Wilson dumped soda on their heads, or stuck lit cigarettes into their skin or flood ammonia at the counter, and they describe the swirl of emotions they feel, even now, when they return to this place. There is joy and sadness, says McLeod, who owns a plumbing and septic business. Joy at what they accomplish. Sadness that there was such hate, says Massey, the retired minister who works with special education students. There is always the small part of me goes back to that day. The men say they never thought about their tormentors as individuals with real lives and real names. They forgave them a long time ago. So it has been strange and somewhat discomforting to suddenly be confronted by a real name, 